Hello there. Welcome to this strategy pattern recognition video. We are going to look at a strategy pattern this time around. Now, I am cheating the system a little bit because I wanted 70 likes on my last video before doing another pattern recognition video, but I was inspired. So I'm going to cheat the system, but do keep liking the videos. Uh, I'll, mon I'll monitor it and next tactics or checkmate pattern video will be released when we get the 70 likes so go back to the last tactics video and uh, do like that one and like this one but like i said i was inspired this was played in uh, tata steel today and it was david anton with white against arian tari and arian tari missed a win here he played pawn to c2 and the game fizzled out to a draw but he could have played the move uh, bishop to b5 here. And this is winning for him. Now why is it winning? Well, before we find out, let's have a look at what our pattern is all about. It's called the three pawn sukran. Now this takes me back to uh, the days of the internet chess club, chessclub.com, which used to be the big thing on land before well before they uh, stopped you know progressing their products so now uh, ICC is, is slowly but surely uh, vanishing uh, is my prediction uh, everybody's playing on on the bigger servers like chess.com but we had this wild variant called wild 7 where you would get this position and you could play it uh, against your friends and this is actually surprisingly uh, rich even though we only have three pawns there are plenty of ways to to outplay your opponent but the key thing is to be aware of sook song situations so what would happen is well both sides would perhaps uh, advance their pawns you know they would bring the king and probably the king would go, go over here black would do the same and eventually we would get some kind of uh, position uh, like for instance, something like this. And here, it's, it's white to move. I actually need to plug in my computer. It's white to move. And he's winning. And he's winning because black is going to get into a Sook Swan with his pawns. So you have to know this key position and the key move that white has to play here. And he has to play the move king to b1. Note that, uh, well, wait a, hang on a minute, set it so I can play the moves. You have to play the move king to b1. Now notice that black's king is in a sukran. It can't move. It is containing the pawns, but once it moves, there's no stopping anything. You're not going to be able to reach either of, the, either of these squares and with queen. Obviously, you can't take a pawn because you, you're not going to be able to catch up. So black is in a bit of a bind here. So he can only move pawns. But now we see the strength of a move king to b1. White will wait for black to move a pawn. And depending on which pawn he moves, he will just move in front of it. So first of all, if you move the central pawn, I will place my king back on b2. And I'm covering both these squares. And now you're already out of moves. The only thing you can do is sacrifice a pawn, but I will simply take it and come back. You can't push because I take the pawn and then I take everything. So you're already in a, in a Sukhshan. You could also push one of the other pawns. Let's start with the flank pawn, but I go in front of it. And again, you find it hard to make a move. If you move this mo uh, pawn, I will take your pawn here. So you can only move this one, but now I can go here because it will be black to move and he will have no further moves. He will have to move his king. And we already saw what happened. If he moves the king, we move a pawn and we win. This also applies if uh, the three pawns, if you move them one rank up, same thing, white to move. He plays the move king to b2. And same thing applies, you move a pawn, I go in front of it. 
So let's start with the eight pawn. I go in front of it. Can't do anything. Suk Swang. Black loses. Central pawn. I go in front of it. Cover the squares. No more moves. And same thing for this one. We get this Suk Swang and Black loses. So it's important to know this so that you end up in a situation uh, where you can play this move. So if we go back to the other one, let's say uh, if we go all the way back, let's say the pawn is here on this square and our king is, is here. So we have to keep the king around. Have to keep the king around so that we're able to play king back here. So we could, for instance, play. Um, probably we should be able to play king to c2. I was wondering about c3 now. C3 king here, a4. No, then yeah, then the king just goes back. Excellent. Yeah. So if c3, we go here. Now the pawns can't move. The only way is to do this. We can't take because this runs, but now we can simply go back. And this is the same position as if the pawn had moved to c3 and our king goes to c2. So we're going to have a suk swang and we go like this. So king c2 is an important move here. If we go king b1, we are in trouble. Because now we can't anticipate what black will do. So if we go too far away, we can't reach this square, so we're in trouble. If we go here, same thing on the other side. We can't reach this square in time, so we're going to be in Sukhsrang. And if we go here, now black can push. And we need black to have the move, so we're in Sukhsrang here, and we can start moving. So very important when you get the position where... Uh, pawns are here you have to be able to play king to b1 the absolute key square and now the three pawns are in sook -shrine. so how does this apply to uh, the game that our entire played well let's have a look the white king it's actually in sook -shrine because it needs to be in the square of the pawn and we can easily find the square of the pawn by putting an arrow uh, diagonally and then we immediately see what what the square is and here's the square so we need to be in any of these squares but the bishop is covering this one and this one and the pawn is covering this one so the ki king is actually in the square of the pawn but he's in suk trunk because he can't move and still be inside the square of the pawn so white can only move pawns, and isn't that starting to look a, a little bit familiar? And the funny thing is that black doesn't even have to play the most accurate move. The most accurate move would be here, and then we do what the three pawn Sukhshrank told us. If the pawn goes here, we go in front of it. If the other one comes here, we go in front of it, and here we go in front of it. But here it actually doesn't matter because we have a bishop. We, we can always create uh, an extra move by moving the bishop back and forth. We just need it to cover these squares. So we could actually also play king g7 on the first move. It doesn't matter. But this is clean just to, uh, to keep the pattern intact. So king here. And black will be... Uh, sorry, white will actually just run out of moves. You can't move the king. So let's say we move the pawn. Obviously we can't take it because then king approaches. So let's just move, make a move like this, and here, eventually we have to move one of the pawns, but then we go here, and it's going to be a Sukhshan. Either you, well, as soon as the king goes away, queen the pawn. So you're going to run out of moves, you're going to sack the A pawn, and you sack this, but then I'm out simply in time here. And uh, I'll make this move, and again, you're running out of moves. King has to move, or you give up all the pawns. 
and the sad king has to move it in Sukhshuang. So this was the three pawn Sukhshuang. I've had I've had end games where uh, I had chances to get this, so it was very important, you know, to consider the options in the end game. But definitely, this is definitely uh, something that you should keep in your arsenal. And well, if Arian Tari had it, then uh, maybe he would have won today. But do check out this variant. Uh, this is something you can play against uh, against your friends to uh, to improve your end game. And yeah, show him this variant, but don't show him the uh, the Sukshan trick, and you should be able to. Uh, to win almost every game and they'll never understand what's going on. I sometimes let my students play this and uh, they haven't yet uh, managed to not lose against me. So eventually, uh, well, I, I beat them and then I tell them a trick and then I don't play them ever again. That's the trick. So, you know, show them, play some games, beat them and tell them why. But then never give them a chance to, uh, to beat you. <laughs> anyway, that was the three pawn Sukhran. Hope you liked it and See you in another pattern recognition video and don't forget to like and share and see you later guys. Bye bye.